Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have our very special guest today. It's Charlotte Adams, and she is going to talk about having a certain pathway to your guitar, and she's going to go more in depth. I'm just giving you the general stuff because I want her to really excite you about this. So she has such an amazing connection with music, and she's going to share a lot of her, her thoughts, her ideas, and her experiences with the guitar and how it actually can change people's lives and I just want you to know that she is part of our podcast community she has her own podcast on the advisor you can go to her podcast and you could type in her name and you'll find her on every distribution channel and just type her name in and her podcast will come up and she has amazing podcasts that she talks about guitar and music and she has just an absolutely amazing insights. So check her out. So Charlotte, tell everybody a little about yourself and tell them about, you know, what you're going to be talking about today. Cause I think it's so amazing when you were talking about it to me. Thanks. I am a guitar teacher, a music educator, and um, I've been doing it for over 50 years. And I started out as a sort of a typical come to your lesson once a week. Um, I critique you, assign things, correct things and you come back next week and um I I get bored easily <laughs> so <laughs> so I decided to start expanding from that and um long story short I've, I'm on my second website this one I call Limitless Guitar I started a few years ago to go with my most recent books I've, I've published seven books about guitar playing and you know when I expanded I started doing workshops retreats all kinds of other things and writing writing yes. books and um and making videos just instructional stuff all kinds of stuff so um the most recent thing that i did was the, the book the two books set you and your guitar which is not a guitar book in the way that you, you know where you put your fingers it's about how to learn as well as in what order to learn and how to organize your learning and how mm -hmm. to um, organize your thoughts and feelings for optimal learning. So I'm really into learning and I'm really into helping people on an individual basis, even if it's broader. So, yeah. so your guitar teaches you how to be your own best teacher, even right. if you have a teacher, because you always are teaching yourself yes. in your practice sessions and in between your lessons, if you have lessons or to be your own best teacher if you choose to do self-directed study. So that's what that is. And then today what I want to talk about is how to choose and create your own individual path toward learning guitar. That means if you've never picked up a guitar, then you'll have some ideas as to how to go about learning the best for you. Mm -hmm. Or if you've played for years, a lot of people... You know, I've kind of got a reputation of where people go to get unstuck because yeah. you get started playing and you play maybe two years, maybe 30 years or more. And then right. you're stuck and you're still doing the same stuff over. No, you don't know how to get out of that rut. So right. love helping people out of that rut. And then you may be someone who's played extensively. Now, maybe you're a professional, but you have certain gaps that you feel you really need to fill in right. little things kind of get in the back of your head thinking, I don't feel that great about that. You know? And so maybe you need some help, but maybe you don't need like weekly lessons. Right. Like when you first started. So I want to talk about that and how to make some choices about that choices, whether you're working with an individual, whether you're, as I said, self-directed study or self-guided study um, and and all the options that are on the internet, different materials and so on. So you can choose, you know, I name my book, You and Your Guitar, because it's about you. Yeah. It's about you, you know, it should be what you want. Your your learning process should suit what, it should suit you individually so that you learn yeah. best, the fastest and have the most fun, which is why we play guitar, right? It is. It is. Yeah. yeah. So I that's what I want to talk about today. I feel like music is, is, is such a way to, it's the key to your soul. You know, I, I feel like, you know, you, you know, you're, you're learning to play the guitar, but yet I feel like 
you know, spiritually, mentally, it just, it just does something to you. Like it, you know, it, there's so many positive things about learning music and, and you also become more aware, your ears become more aware of certain sounds. You start to, you, you know, you, you kind of like the music just goes to your soul. It goes to your heart. It's not just music anymore. It's like a piece of you, you know, I feel, you know, I feel that, you know, when I talk to many people in the music field and even myself, I can't play an instrument, but I just love music. Like even when I hear a person playing a guitar, it just puts me on a, on another plane on another level, you know, and I yeah. think it's, I think it's just a, a wonderful tool. I think music is very healing. I think the same thing. And I think it changes you, like you said. If, you know, for people who really immerse themselves in music from an early age, especially, um, their, their evolution is enhanced. Yeah. And, um, you know, you, you can misuse it just like you can misuse anything. But when you refer to spiritual growth, whatever. Um, so, yeah, it, it does. It does have a profound influence. And also, I think there's a potential, I'm kind of going back now because I'm thinking I just published that book that I talked about in our first talk. Yeah. Uh, songs. Um, when you play and or sing songs that have a universal meaning or mm -hmm. has a lot of meaning to you, um, it has the potential to really build your uh, empathy and compassion. Right. Your, connection to other people and their feelings and experiences so that's right. a little off from creating your path but but yes <laughs> I agree with you now when you say creating your path what exactly do you mean because there's lots of different ways you can use that phrase but what does that uh, phrase mean to you I mean um you it could be as specific as creating a curriculum like deciding how do I go about this next phase of my learning or maybe you have a broad view of all of my learning. Um, but I mean, you, that's going to change as you go along, just like everything in life. You learn something and you springboard off of that. Right. But um, how, let's say you're a beginner. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover all the levels. So okay. me back, draw me back if I <laughs> spend too much time on one. But say you're a beginner and you're thinking, oh, I've got all these options. I could go find a teacher locally. Mm -hmm. I could... Um, go to YouTube videos. I could take courses online. I could buy a bunch of books. You know, you have these different options. Right. So um, then you, depending on who's doing the selling, <laughs> you're going to get the message, oh, this is the way to go, right? Yeah. But who's doing the selling doesn't know you. So right. there's that. Now you're going you're gonna to need to take responsibility for your own learning. I will say that as a beginner, um, there's some really important things that you want to get correct so that they don't hold you back down the road. So right. if you can have either an online teacher who's a really uh, well-schooled in, in these things I'm about to mention or mm -hmm. an in-person teacher. It doesn't, it's not whether you're in-person or online. It's how, it's the teacher you have. Mm -hmm. Do they have the traits that, will enable you to go forward right um, so so you need to to get the basics of how to hold your guitar so you don't hurt your body so you can learn the most quickly so you're not held back down the road when people get stuck and they're like i'm stuck well you've got poor technique that you've ingrained for 30 years you're gonna have to unwind that and rebuild right so, those things. so get a good foundation so i would say as a as a beginner um, pay attention it, it, it's not going to help you just jump in and just start doing a bunch of YouTube videos just at random mm -hmm. it's tempting there's yeah. a million of them and they're free and mm -hmm. you can do it I mean the great thing about online is it's convenient you can do it at your own pace I, it's great I have a lot of online stuff and I think people should use it but if you're a rank beginner have some kind of a plan in place right. mm -hmm. okay. In fact, I, I sell these, as I've mentioned, I've written a lot of books, whatever a lot means, mm -hmm. and I I have packaged them together so you get a good price. But I've recently, in thinking about this, it inspired me to package, to, to bundle together also 
a block of lessons. So right. you did a really good price. So for the beginning, I, you know, I already had put at least one lesson in because I don't think anyone should begin guitar without having some personal assistance. Right. Okay. So that's beginning. Um, and then you know, I've already covered, I think you're going to regret it if you just go grab the YouTube videos. You might want to look at online courses. I'm going to go over the pros and cons of that. The pros, right. if they're developed by, and usually they are, a, a experienced, conscientious teacher, they'll be well organized. You won't yeah. have to figure out what do I do next. Um, and you'll have that whole, whole package. However, um, people create these courses because they've been, you know, usually it's people who've taught guitar for a while and they're like most guitar teachers starving. <laughs> <laughs> One of the drawbacks of teaching guitar. Mm. Um, so, you know, they can make money and get to a lot more people, and that's fine. So, right. um, I would say anytime you buy an online course, it would be like the way I advise people to buy a guitar. Find what you want. When you're sure you want it, walk away and sleep on it. Yeah. Because I know I, I, I'm... <laughs> I will do it too. Like you get all excited about you, you're getting sold this and you get all excited, but when you buy it, will you use it? Exactly. That's how good it is. And and you'll see the courses saying, um, you know, 90% of the people or 80% of the people who finished this course saw improvement. Don't forget those words who finished this course. Yeah. That's huge. Okay. So I've I've signed up for courses, not guitar courses, but other courses that I was all excited about, and I didn't even finish them. I'm super disciplined and motivated. Mm -hmm. so I got to a point where it's like, nah, it's not working for me. I can go faster or better another way. Doesn't yeah. mean it's a bad course. It just means that it might not you might not get your gazillion dollars worth out of it. Right. So, so, but again, you know, it might be a good course. Um, great things about still the same kind of uh, advantages is on YouTube is that you can work at your own pace mm -hmm. and um, you can review it indefinitely. You can go back and see the videos over and over and over again, which is great. And in some cases you can even slow them down. Right. Excuse me. So, so all that's great, but they're not, they're not seeing you. Yeah. So you don't know, am I doing it correctly? And, um, just how am I doing? And and can I ask questions? That would be another big thing to, to look for in the course. Am I going to be able to have some personal interaction with the creator of this course or someone representing that creator? This right. Quality. So so that's beginning. Um, that would also apply to intermediate. Let's call it intermediate. Okay. <laughs> for lack of a better word. Someone who's played a long time, maybe they're stuck, maybe they're not so stuck, but they still want to expedite their improvement. Right. Um, if if you're in that position, you may actually be more qualified or capable of choosing what your next thing to study is because you you're ident you've ident identified this. So I got this and that and the other, but I'm missing here. Same with right. the level above that. Yes. Um, however, you still, you may in some ways even more need someone to help you because here's the catch. Mm -hmm. You know, you're dissatisfied and this applies to me level. You know, you're dissatisfied enough with just trying to make it on your own that, that you're looking for something, whether it's a human being or a virtual course, but you don't know what you don't know. How do you know what you don't know? Right. In other words, as a teacher, when people come to me and they say, I'm stuck, I say, well, ask them some questions, listen to them play a little bit and go, oh, I got it. I know what you're missing. See, but you don't know what you're missing. That's why you're having to present it to me. Right. So that's huge. And, I, you know, I try and fill in that. I try and meet all these needs. I think I have a way to meet all these needs because right. I don't require people to just take every week. Mm -hmm. I have courses, but they're, they're, they're more modest and they don't cost anything in a virtual studio, yeah, uh, which we discussed. And um, and I and if you want to take one lesson a month, one lesson period, right? Two lessons 
month, one every six months, whatever, then that's what we do. In other words, do what's called for. That's kind right. of my motto in life is do what's called for. Don't do what fits into my scheme of uh, how much money I'm going to get this month or how my schedule is going to run or anything like that. I'll, I'll make that work. Right. See what works for you. And that'll work for me. It'll right. work for me. You know, because I'm, that's my reason for teaching is for it to work for you. Yeah. <laughs> right? so, so if you're happy, I'm like on cloud nine. So, <laughs> um, so that, the, and then the other thing that the teacher is going to provide you in addition to feedback is support, emotional support. It's huge. Yeah. So um, when you choose a teacher and I, I, I think I mentioned to you, I have an article on my website that's 25 things to look for in a guitar teacher. And I, I recommend people go to that because I put a lot into it and I think it's valid. And there's not enough time to go into all of that right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, but those are things, those are traits that you will be hard pressed to find them all in one teacher. Right. Um. And I'm available if you want to find them in me. Mm -hmm. But um, if you if you find a teacher that you get along with and they're kind, they're empathetic, and they listen and they care about what your goals are, and right. they're educated, mm -hmm. and if there's some of these other traits that are missing, then you can you can come take a lesson from me, or you can find them somewhere else. Like you you need to learn how to fill in the gaps. Right. Your best case scenario. I mm -hmm. guess what I'm really trying to say is when you take responsibility for your learning rather than just giving it to one course or one teacher completely, that's yeah. what you do the best. I agree. I agree. So that's the path, you know, determining. And that's why I have on my website the the page choose your path so you can go take a little simple questionnaire. I can do this, can you do that? Can you do the other? You're in this level, go to these books you know, look at these le lessons in the virtual studio, so on and so forth. So you have something to start with and go with. Right. Choosing your path. Yeah. I think it's so important to have that guidance and, and to have that path, to know what path you're on. Because if you don't know what path you're on, you're kind of lost, you know. And But if you have, if you can figure out the path you're on and then get the proper guidance, you could, you could excel to, you know, amazing amazing abilities you know when it comes to guitar playing right and you know there's another thing about it and this is something that a course or a teacher will help you with is as you said you know you know where you're going you can stop thinking all the time about what am i going to do tomorrow right and just do it yeah you know you have your curriculum of sorts right mm -hmm. yeah like the so, famous Nike quote, just do it. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think there's some other things I want to bring up that are really important in making these decisions is um, knowing yourself, you know, mm -hmm. being, really taking a good, honest look at yourself when you make these decisions, because are you making a decision because you know, this platform or this this way of learning is easy mm -hmm. or because I will respond the best to it or because right. it offers me what I need at this point. Right. Um, so, you know, if you have a teacher, you have someone that you're accountable to. Mm -hmm. That's big. Yes. And um, you also have something that's going to keep you motivated if you have the, the teacher that I'm describing in this article. Yeah. So, you know, chronic problem with students for all the gazillion years I've taught is they will contact me and say, I don't want to take my lesson this week because I haven't practiced. Right. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. like, well, you need to come to your lesson. We're going to, we're going to fix that. You know? Yeah. Several things happen. Don't happen with every teacher, but one of the things that doesn't happen with every teacher definitely happens with me. And every teacher could do this. Um, so teachers out there, <laughs> it makes it will keep your students coming back for more, and you'll be happier. Teach them something. If you if you come to me and you haven't practiced what we decided would be best for you to practice last week or however long it's been, and you haven't practiced it, okay, 
let's learn something. Mm -hmm. And you can go practice that the next time and we'll talk about it the next time we meet. But right. there's a million things to learn. I will never run out of things that I can teach you that will help you. You leave reinvigorated, re-inspired, ready to go. You didn't waste your money. And, and people say, I'm wasting your time. You can't waste my time. I'm your right. teacher. I love you. I'm here to help you. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so you're not going to waste my time. But I think we, you know, we have ingrained in us these things about learning that we think we're supposed to do something. And we're, we're not good enough if we don't meet these standards, you know? Yeah. Well, keep you, you know, if you have those feelings, whether they're conscious or unconscious, it can keep you away from lessons that could really help you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And so if you if you're going to a teacher that makes you feel bad, if you had, you know, if your kid was sick, sick all week or you had right. to school or, you know, some kind of or maybe you were just depressed or. Yeah. Wanted to go to the beach, whatever. Mm -hmm. if you didn't do what you'd set out to do and your teacher makes you feel bad about it. You're going to feel bad about lessons. And unfortunately, you may feel bad about playing guitar or about yourself. Right. Feeling bad about yourself never helped anybody learn anything. Very true. All right. So um, how did I get off on that? I'm sure there's a circle back to something, but um, well, yeah. Oh, accountability. Mm -hmm. So so there's that. Um, but it also kind of gets you, oh, I got a lesson tomorrow. I better practice this, you know, yeah. it's going through that. Mm -hmm. um, and then it gets you. Um, yeah. Yeah. If you have somebody that will help you stay excited or interested mm -hmm. then, then that's really big because yes it is. i know you know i i have self-taught all my life and honestly i i learn really well that way and i like it because i can go at my own pace yeah i get lonely mm -hmm. you know sometimes i i mean this is why i love teaching i don't right. get lonely <laughs> <laughs> i can interact about this topic that i love Right. And continue to be more creative about it and generate ideas and have stuff go back and forth. Um, I, I get turned on to a lot of new music for my students that I might not otherwise learn, listen to or, or even, you know, come into contact with. So um, all of those are, are good things. However, another thing that I feel like people often think is that in-person lessons, in fact, I've had so many people say, well, you know, obviously, in-person lessons are better than online lessons. I'm like, no, not obviously. Yeah. I think that's a myth. I mean, I know it's a myth because I've lived it. So right. I, I, I've taught both. And, um, you know, if you're online, my students online accomplish more than they do in person. Right. They're more focused, mm -hmm. more relaxed. You know, we keep things going in the direction that we want them to go. They're not worried about uh is somebody else coming right now or right outside the window or gee i'm uncomfortable in this chair or you know there's not all those distractions yeah concerns and um and so online is great online one-on-one -on -one is great if you have a teacher who is astute mm -hmm. so I can notice every little nuance. I can see more in your hands than when I'm in person because I can't get in your face. I don't want to move into your personal space. As right, much. right. Um, and also energetically, it's more comfortable because yeah. we don't have to worry about who's in whose space. Yeah. Right, and that makes sense to you. I'm glad. It uh, does. It's a big thing. It's a big thing. Um, so, so online is great if the person is empathetic and um, can pick out details. Right. Now, I can teach on the phone. Oh, <laughs> yeah. wow. Your teacher can hear. I mean, I can say, oh, you need to move your finger closer to the threat, and you'll get a better tone, whatever. There, there are details. I've taught for a long time, and I, I notice all this stuff. Um, not everybody does. It doesn't mean they're not a good teacher. They're, right that they're not the teacher for you to take online from or maybe not at all i mean that's just something you have to decide right but give your teacher a chance right you know, don't go one lesson and think you're going to know you can't 
take a month worth of lessons. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't know your teacher. You can't know where they're going. The, the first lesson is to get introduced to one another. Right. Where your teacher sees you, hears you, knows where you are, and then he or she can begin to formulate yeah. where you're going. But one lesson is just like, hi. <laughs> 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 you don't learn what it's going to be like. You, you learn what it's going to be like by doing it. Right. And that's so true. It takes time to get to know know somebody. And, you know, you can feel a connection with the person, but really it takes time to, sometimes it, it takes time to get close and to, to develop that trust and to be able to really, once you get to know each other, it's different, you know, but it, it does take more than, you know, just one visit, you know, to get to know the person. You kind of have to break the ice, you know, and sometimes that can take a month. Some for, some people, it can take longer, but, you know, it, it all depends, you know, and some people, it could just connect right away. Everybody's different. But like you said, the biggest thing, giving them a chance. And that that's, that's the main thing is give them a chance. Well, and what you said about trusting, I'm glad you brought that up because I hadn't thought about in this context, but it's super important. I try to remember to tell my students how much I admire them for coming to lessons because it takes so much courage. Yeah. It's hard. I mean, you're vulnerable. Right. And you don't, ex you know, a lot of times people don't expect it. And then they suddenly like start to play for me. And they're like, I'm so nervous. I'm like, well, yeah, welcome to the human race, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I just tell them, you know what? everybody goes through that yes it's really hard to play it, for me when I started performing I realized quickly that it was a lot easier for me to play in front of a large group especially if they if it was kind of dark out there and lined on the stage yeah one person right because you can depersonalize that group one person oh let's make it even more uncomfortable let's make sure that one person is a person who knows every mistake you make yeah exactly <laughs> gonna hear and see everything so so you want your teacher to be you want that place to be very safe you want to feel safe that's right. the place for you to make mistakes yeah you know, and I always tell people this is a place for you to make mistakes but also I know even after you've taken lessons for a while you're going to do better at home yeah. You know, it's still going to be harder to play for me, but I have the experience to know what's a problem and what's right. not. You know, oh, no, exactly. no, that's not a problem. I know you don't. I can tell you've got this, you know, but oh, let's address this. So, um, so give yourself some time, you know, as I always tell them, it's you're going to wear it out. You're going to wear this nervousness out with time. Yeah. It'll get softer and fade into the background. But right. it takes, like you said, sometimes it can take longer. Right. And the only way to get that is to have enough time with the teacher to know, are they trustworthy? Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. But once you've, you've built that connection, you know, great things can happen because then you, you know, you have that bond, you have that trust between each other and you, and you don't feel so vulnerable. So if you make a mistake and, you know, or, or something's not perfect, you don't feel so embarrassed because I think that's that's a big issue too is that people get embarrassed they don't want to oh, fail yeah. they don't want to feel like they failed you know and if they do something wrong they 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 get embarrassed you know their you know their self worth kind of falls down a little bit. Well, and I think it's uh, magnified mm -hmm. with guitar because you know you're embarrassed because you care. I mean, what you were talking about what music means how does what does it mean to us personally and how does it affect us this is something you deeply care about and you're feeling vulnerable around yeah so um it's charged it's charged mm -hmm. but it can you know you can end up being fine with it and sometimes in the shorter time and and you don't need to judge yourself if it takes you a long time or you know it, it doesn't matter it is what it is but right just go to your online or in-person lessons um and and get from what you can knowing that it's a gift yeah yeah you know, it's a gift and then if you know if you need um if you need some encouragement or support or kindness that you don't feel like you got enough well then get it you know call me or email me or i'll just you know send me an email or whatever i'll write you back or or if you have somebody anybody that can help you with that and then after a few lessons, if you decide that it's not going to work, then it's not going to work. Find right. 
lots or, you know, take a long time to find another way to go after it. Yeah. What would you like to like, if you had to emphasize some important factors on what we talked about, what are some of the main things people have to realize, especially when they're, they're, they might be a beginner and they're on their pathway, they're on their path to being, you know, getting guitar lessons and being a guitar player, uh, no matter what level you're on. Are there some things that you want to emphasize about today? Sure. I think that um, being open to various ways of learning is important. Mm -hmm. Um so just because you choose to do lessons with a teacher or you choose to do an online course or you choose to choose your lessons from YouTube or whatever it is you, you decide yeah. to do, um, be open to combining things. Right. If I have someone teach taking lessons from me, I'm always happy that they, but in fact, all, pretty much maybe all of my students bring songs in they found from YouTube that they want to learn. And I'll say, Here's oh, really? Yeah, and if I and they'll give me a link to it, and I can show them how to play it. But a lot of times they'll say, "I've been using this tutorial." I'll go, "Okay, I'll check the tutorial." And they'll say, "But I don't understand this." <laughs> so they they've gone to YouTube, they've tried to learn the song, and they've gotten some success in in other areas, not. And so I can help them through that. So that helps. It keeps me knowing that they're doing something that they've chosen. They're excited about. I don't have to, you know throw a dart at it and say, do you like this? Do you like that? Yay. So, so that's good. Or it also helps them if they're looking something up, they can say, well, this person said, blah, 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 about maybe something's about theory. And I can say, okay, yes and no, let's get this organized and, and right. clarified because there's a lot of stuff that's not clear at all. And it can be misleading. Exactly. So, so combining is good. Um, if you feel like you just want to listen every so now, every so often, every now and then, go for it. You know, right. don't feel like you have to sign up and take lessons every week because that's the only way to do it. Um, yeah, it's the only way to do it with a lot of people, but it's not the only way to do it. Right. So combining and um, taking a good honest look at yourself. Like I said, um, are you choosing something because it's a particular way because it's easy or because it's the best way for you. Yeah. Also know, are you willing to embrace challenges? Will you push yourself through like a course might and a teacher will. Right. You know, so, so you need to know, and you can look at that. Have I done, you can ask yourself, have I been successful in self-guided study in other areas? How right. Did I, feel? did I give up on it? Um, did I lose focus because I'm sitting in front of a computer with nobody there? And so I, I think I'll have a snack and I'll, oh, oh, I'll check my email and so forth. You know, like if, if that's the case. Yeah. It's like you're either going to have to change that or you're going to have to go somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you no, know, because if you just pop out of everything you're doing, then you're going to go pretty slow if it all, yeah. you know. Very true. So true. Now, what kind of services do you offer? So if someone wanted to contact you and they don't know the services, what kind of services do you offer? So I I have traditional lessons. If you want to take a lesson every week. Um, and then I have, as I mentioned, you can request a, at any interval you want lessons. I have something that I call six month coaching. So for if you are a more advanced player, um, and you just want more coaching than lessons, like mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll listen to you, listen to what you have to say and how you play yeah. and offer coaching. <laughs> um, and then um, I have these packages. So say you, you, you go to the choose your path page and you see, say I'm in level two. Right. So you get the materials for level two. And then um, you can take four lessons from me, four one-hour lessons when you want to. You guys, right. six months to take those four lessons. Right. Um, so I just offer a wide variety of lesson options or coaching options. And um, then I have the virtual studio, which is kind of like a, 
in a way it is kind of like YouTube and it's like a library, mm -hmm. but it, it's categorized right? And it's order. And, and you can see, Oh, uh, I'm going to do these lessons that go with this that I'm learning. You know? Yeah. So, and it's not all video, it's audio and text lessons also. So I offer the virtual studio, the books and videos um, and the online lessons one-on-one. -on -one. I'm only doing one-on-one -on -one now. Okay. Yeah. And all, all that's on the website. If you go to lessons and coaching in the top uh, menu. And then, um, and if you want to look at the article, you said you would put that in the show notes. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to put the link to the article. You have a great article. Um, uh, Charlotte has a article that teaches, uh, 20 different ways, um, to, uh, what it's to learn uh, how, how long, how many? 25, 25. Yeah. 25, 25 things to look for in a good guitar teacher, 25 yeah. guitar teacher. And we'll have the link to that in the description. I think that's so important because I think sometimes people don't know what to look for, you know, and it kind oh, of yeah. guides them when to find the right teacher that's going to be the best option for them and they'll get the most out of it because you don't want to spend money on lessons with a teacher that's not really going to have their heart in it. Well, that's not going to have their heart in it or maybe just doesn't have a good enough ear or doesn't have enough a strong enough background and right. maybe isn't articulate enough to convey the information yeah. uh there there's a variety of things that that could be holding you back right um, there are a lot of good teachers out there so you know you can you can find that uh the other thing that's on the site that i would encourage people to go to is the articles section because i've got I don't know, 55, 60 articles that I've written that are just um, informative. They're not lessons. Again, these are not like where to put your fingers. They're things about mm -hmm. uh, everything else about guitar playing. Right. So, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I like that. I like that you have the articles also. And you have the virtual room, you know, and virtual lessons, and then you have the one-on-one -on -one as well. So you offer a lot of different things. So that's, that's pretty amazing. Now, where can they find your website? It's called Limitless Guitar. The URL is limitless-guitar.com. So Limitless Guitar. Um, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter, LinkedIn, and, um, and online. My website is the, the big thing. So <laughs> there. And and do you um you said you've written books you've written a lot of booklets and books are they available on your website? They are. I have a, a beginning book, getting started. It has audio files to go with it. Moving on also has audio files. Ear training, audio files. <laughs> Theory, uh, lead playing. I have one called Fifty Two Lessons, which is again this is great for teachers. If your student shows up and doesn't hadn't practiced, grab this book and you have something to teach. <laughs> or it's good for you. Um, and then you and your guitar, which is the one I referred to earlier. So you can get all of those on the website and all of them in various combinations of bundles or packages to save yourself some money. But there, nothing I do is expensive. Mm -hmm. None of my materials, I keep everything really cheap. I self-publish because I'm really picky about what they look like and feel like. Right. And, um, yeah. I mean, I, I'm doing this for you, you know? Mm. <laughs> yeah. I love it. You're amazing, Charlotte. Oh, oh, thank goodness. you, Stacey. I'm so grateful for you. Uh, same here. You know, I really appreciate you. You've given a wealth of information and I love how you, you know, you're showing people how to open their, their, their senses up to a new world and be able to actually use the abilities they have that maybe they didn't even know that they were capable of, you know, doing, or they didn't know they could excel to the level they could, you know? So, yeah. you know, you'd be surprised you get in there and start doing it, apply yourself and you'll be surprised. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, my God. Thank you so much, Charlotte, for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. I always love seeing you and talking with you. And I'm looking Thank forward you. to next time. Yes, I look forward to it. You have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye bye.